On today's episode, a kidnapping case with a difference. There were three victims, all the family of a global megastar who offered a half a million dollar reward for their safe return. It was a dark Hollywood night when the kidnappers sped away in a getaway car, leaving a man severely injured and bleeding out on the pavement. He'd been trying to rescue the three victims, but the attackers had weapons. He never stood a chance. He thought he'd failed to save them. But then, one of the victims escaped their captor and ran back to his side to comfort him in what could have been his final moments. Oh, and the three kidnapping victims? They were all dogs. <laughs> Lady Gaga's dogs. So thank God it's Freaky Friday. Let's talk about that infamous triple dog napping and more importantly, the attempted murder of the man that tried to save them. Ooh. Before we get into this Freaky Friday episode, I wanna thank our sponsor, Scentbird, for making this video possible. And this is my absolute dream sponsor. I've said this before, you guys might not know that I am absolutely obsessed with perfumes. It's almost a problem. I'm always on the lookout for my next signature scent because I like to mix it up fairly often. Whenever I'm starting a new chapter or like a new beginning in my life, I like to get a new perfume to go alongside that. So then like when I come out of that chapter and I smell the perfume, I can like smell that stage of my life. So I'm always on the lookout for my next favorite perfume and Scentbird makes it so easy to try out and discover new scents without having to spend a huge amount on the full size bottle. Scentbird is a monthly subscription service where you can try out new designer fragrances for just $17 a month. They send you a little vial of perfume and you can get a cute little case to go over the top of it. And in one of these little bottles is a full month's supply of perfume, which is crazy. That way you can fully test it out and get people's reactions on it because really perfume changes on every individual. It reacts with your body chemistry and you can never really know if you 100% love a fragrance until you've tried it on your own body a few times. And then, once you are sure, that's when you can invest in the big bottle. Cause not gonna lie, I have a few big bottles of perfume in my drawer that I've kind of gone off of because I didn't try them before I bought it. It's a totally different experience spraying it on a little piece of paper in the shop and smelling it versus smelling it on your body. So there's a few scents that I've been test driving lately. Let me tell you about them. We have Oula Rouge Exclusif by Christian Siriano. I would describe this one as like bold, sophisticated, sexy. This is like a, a restaurant perfume to me. I would wear this to go out on a date night with my boyfriend. If you're wondering why I'm holding this so close to my face, it's because I've sprayed all the perfumes on their cards. So I keep going, it's lovely. I also got Seven Summers by Dime. And I think this one is my favorite. This, oh my God. You're not gonna believe the notes in this one. If you follow me on my other socials, you will know how much I love a glass of champagne. Champagne is the second note in this. Of course, we're meant to be. This one's a lot lighter. It's sweeter. One of the notes is warm sugar. So if you're like a, a cakey sweet scents kind of gal, this one, I am one of those as well. A lot of my perfumes have caramel as a note. And the third one I've been wearing is Milk by Commodity. And this one, Kind of similar to the last one, but get rid of all the sweet stuff. It's still a very light, fresh, soft fragrance. This one has a lot of woody notes in it. It's got amber, skin musk, and I, first of all, that sounds a bit gross, but it's really nice. What is skin musk? I don't know. It smells lovely though. Yeah, I'm really getting the wood. This is giving like a sexy museum. What did I just say? Anyway, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> I'm gonna stop trying to describe fragrances. If you're in the US or Canada, you can try Scentbird. You can try all of these scents for yourself. Just click the link down below in the description. And if you use the code Eleanor Neal at checkout, you will get 55% off of your Scentbird order. Yes, over half off. That's down from $17 to just $7 for your first month, which is insane. Go do it. I feel like it's a no-brainer. Go do it, girl. Like I said, Scentbird is only available in the US and Canada right now, so I'm sorry if that doesn't include you. Fingers crossed that one day Scentbird will be 
everywhere. But thank you so much to Scentbird for sponsoring this video once again. I love you guys and I love perfumes. <laughs> now before we jump into the story, I just want to let you know that today we're going to be covering a lot of sensitive topics, so as always, viewer discretion is advised. And while we make every effort to fact check all of our sources and our information, no action should be taken in reliance upon the information in this video. All opinions about to be stated are mine and mine alone and with all of that out of the way, let's talk about the dog napping scandal of the century. Back in early 2021, Lady Gaga was riding high. I mean, as she consistently has been for almost two whole decades now. The woman is an absolute star. Her talent knows no bounds and she just keeps getting bigger and better as the years go by. She's been so influential. She has shaped and inspired so many creatives. And like I say, she doesn't show any signs of slowing down anytime soon. In 2021, she'd already won an Oscar for her song Shallow in A Star Is Born. She just performed at Joe Biden's inauguration and then she landed another starring role in the film House of Gucci. She is such a busy bee that for the most part, Gaga splits her time between New York City, which is where she's originally from, and LA. Of course, there's a lot of different opportunities and appearances and engagements and events that a superstar like Gaga is gonna need to go to in both of those major cities. Although she does have two different houses in LA, which is a bit mad, like to need two separate properties in one space. I struggle to film one apartment. And like, imagine all that hoovering. Imagine all the cleaning. Well, I guess she has cleaners, but I don't know, that's mad. <laughs> Superstars like Gaga have huge teams behind them. There's housekeepers, PAs, agents, drivers, managers, bodyguards, you name it. But there was one job in Gaga's team that was arguably the most important of all, and that was taking care of her three French bulldogs, Koji, Miss Asia, and Gustave. Frenchies have exploded in popularity over the last 10 years or so. They're the single most popular dog breed in the US. And to be honest, it's kind of easy to see why. Well, first of all, they're adorable. <laughs> they're tiny, they've got these like squishy, smushy faces. Oh, I love like a an ugly, cute dog. No offense to Frenchies, but they're kind of ugly cute, aren't they? They're very small, so they're very easy to manage. A lot of people opt for them for that reason as well. And they're very affectionate. They're very loyal. I mean, all dogs are pretty much, but especially Frenchies. But French Bulldogs are not without their issues. They have been slowly and carefully bred over the last few hundred years to give them the most desirable features, like those famous smushy faces. But this excessive selective breeding has caused so many issues for these poor puppies. Things like breathing issues that often require surgery. These dogs are born struggling to breathe through their squished up faces. They're also so known to have skin problems, mobility problems, the list goes on. Life is hard for a Frenchie. Of course, the good breeders make sure that their animals are super healthy, they get all their checks, all their vaccinations, you know, everything's in good working order and there's a lot of documentation that those dogs are healthy and happy. And the breeders that take really, really good care of their animals obviously charge more money for them. So a properly healthy pedigree French bulldog can go for tens of thousands of dollars. A small price to pay for a superstar like Gaga. And with that, she had three new fluffy little besties. In 2021, Gaga had to fly out to Italy to film House of Gucci, and she was gonna leave her three fur babies back at home. I'm sorry if you don't like that term. That's been very controversial in the team. I'm quite partial to a fur baby. I have two fur babies of my own. What are you gonna do about it? But anyway, Gla Glaga, who's Glaga? Gaga, if she was like from Star Wars or something. <laughs> Gaga was flying to Italy and so she had to get someone in to care for the dogs to make sure that they were played with and cuddled and walked multiple times a day. So she went and hired a professional dog walker named Ryan Fisher and he was practically paid to be the puppy's temporary owner, which is a dream job if I've ever heard of one. Ryan was 39 years old. He was from New York, just like Gaga, and he'd been in the dog walking business for a long ass time at this point. After he left university, he got a job at a pet supply store and he was just like retail staff. But in this company, they had in-house dog walkers. Ryan wasn't one of them yet, but he did notice that they seemed way happier than he did, getting to spend their whole day with these 
fluffy, happy, loyal little puppies. Like, and he was just behind a till or whatever. And then one day, one of the dog walkers at the company needed a bit of help. And so they asked Ryan to come out with them and he absolutely fell in love with it. He realized that he wanted to switch career paths slightly to be a dog walker instead. Once he got fully into professional puppy care, he actually made the cutest little Instagram page that is still running to this day. He posts pictures of the dogs that he looks after and then in the caption, he'll write like a funny little backstory for them. It is really, really cute. If you're a dog person especially, I recommend going and searching up that Instagram and having a bit of a scroll through. When you've watched this video though, stay here with me. First. While Ryan was still living in New York, he started walking Gaga's personal stylist's dogs. I don't believe he had a connection to Gaga at this point in time. I think this was just a client of his and it just so happened that she knew Gaga. Ryan didn't necessarily have a connection to Mother Monster herself at this point in time. And it wasn't like he was expecting that either. He wasn't like working up to that. He was perfectly happy being a dog walker in New York with the clients that he had. But then one day, he had a vision, like Raven. Ryan was super, super spiritual and he believed that he would get like messages in visions and things like that. And one day he had this vision of like a beautiful, big open ocean, which they obviously don't really have in New York. He didn't quite know what this vision meant until 2019 when he visited LA and he was just doing this like hike along a canyon and he looked over the edge and saw that exact big beautiful oceanscape that he had seen in a vision. And this felt like confirmation to him that he was being called to LA for whatever reason. He didn't know, obviously he didn't have the context. He just knew that something wanted him to be near that ocean. And so with that, Ryan Fisher moved to LA. When he did, he began picking up a whole new roster of clients in the Hollywood Hills. And it was pretty easy for him to do because he was really well established at this point in time. He had connections and they would put in words with people that they knew in LA, like, oh, my dog walker's moving if you need one. Here he is. And so it was really easy for, for him to make that move. He'd worked for a lot of high profile clients, not like majorly high profile, but people like Gaga's stylist, star adjacent people or small stars. And I believe it was through Gaga's stylist that Ryan was recommended to Gaga herself. And very quickly after moving to LA, Ryan Fisher became Gaga's full time professional puppy care. I don't think he had any other clients in that area. He was there to walk those Frenchies a few times a day, to look after them, play with them in the house. You know, he was their temporary owner. And Brian was incredibly professional with his work. He never divulged anything about his clients to his friends or family, because obviously, a lot of them were very, very high profile. He rarely even told his loved ones who his clients were, but in early 2020, as the pandemic hit, womp womp, <laughs> Did you just say womp womp? When the pandemic hit, he had no choice but to tell his family that he wouldn't be returning to quarantine with them because he was gonna be quarantining with his client. His client, Lady Gaga. Could you imagine being in quarantine with Lady Gaga and three puppies and getting paid to just play with the puppies all day, every day, that? Again, dream job. Obviously through the pandemic, Gaga was kind of working from home on various things while Ryan was making sure that those dogs got their multiple walks a day and all that. In fact, I think a few members of staff stayed with Gaga through 2020, housekeepers and stuff like that. They had like, you know, you were allowed a bubble during the pandemic of like people that you were allowed to see. So it was like that for about a year. And then in early 2021, as restrictions started lifting and the world started going back to normal, Ryan got invited on a date. It was February 24th, 2021. Ryan went out on that date and hopefully had a good time. I mean, I couldn't really find how that date went because the rest of his day was the worst day that he had ever experienced. So let's start off with the good, shall we? He went out during the day on that date and he left the three dogs in the care of his assistant. When he arrived back home in the evening, it was quite late, but he still had doggy duties to attend to. So he went and got Miss Asia, Koji and Gustav. He put all their leads on them and they all set off for their final adventure of the day. It was a mild evening that night. Lucky for LA, they never really experience bad winters, do they? So the four of them ventured around the block and Ryan actually made a pit stop at a shop to go and buy a bottle of champagne on the way to Sunset Boulevard. But things wouldn't be so peaceful for long. What Ryan didn't realize was that a car 
had been following him and the dogs on their walk. It was already dark at this point, just before 10 p.m. And so of course, Ryan didn't notice that there was a car slowly creeping behind with its headlights off. Whoever they were, they had already figured out that those three Frenchies that Ryan was walking, they were worth a hell of a lot of money. That was tens of thousands of dollars just plodding along next to it. As he walked the dogs down this quiet residential street, the car suddenly sped up and stopped right in front of them. What happened next was actually all recorded on multiple smart doorbells on different houses on that street. I guess that's the upside of living in such a rich upscale neighborhood is that everyone has CCTV on their houses. So this whole ordeal was caught on numerous doorbells. That's crazy to me. And within hours of this incident taking place, at least one of those videos had been sold to TMZ. I'm gonna give you a little audio description of these videos because I watched one as part of my research and it was actually harrowing. For YouTube viewers, we'll probably show some clips of the videos over the top, but we won't include audio because Honestly, that was kind of the worst part of it all, for me anyway. Hearing Ryan screaming out in pain, you can hear the terror in his voice. It is so heartbreaking and it's so unsettling. So I would advise against watching that video. And like I said, I'm gonna give you an audio description now. So don't worry. When the car sped up and stopped in front of them, two men jumped out and set straight at Ryan and the dogs. One of them actually cocked a handgun and pointed it at Ryan, yelling at him to give it up. But Ryan didn't let go of those dogs leads. He knew that he had a duty to protect them. So the men started grappling with Ryan and he tried to fight back as much as he could, even using his bottle of champagne as a weapon because that was all he had. He was caught so off guard during all of this. He had three dog leads in his hand and if you've ever walked a dog before, you know that one is often enough to be like pulling you around. And bless their hearts, French bulldogs are not gonna be much help in this situation against robbers. I mean, they were probably very panicked, but what can they do? <laughs> They're three tiny little smushy dogs. In the footage, you can hear the champagne bottle fall to the floor as Ryan loses the fight. In all of that commotion, I don't even know if the robbers realized that they had lost one of the dogs. Miss Asia had managed to wriggle away from her captors and run away. Well, she hadn't run very far away. She just ran a little bit away from them. And Ryan said that he actually gave her a signal to stay hidden. Apparently she was very good at understanding signals like this from Ryan. I guess they had a really close bond, didn't they? They spent every single day together for the past year and a bit. And she actually did as she was told. She kind of stayed in a bush as all of this was going on. But throughout all of this, Ryan still hasn't let go of the other two leads and the men have not stopped attacking him the whole time. They were trying every tactic in the book. Ryan was getting punched, kicked, scratched, thrown to the ground. But through all of that, he did not loosen his grip on those two dogs one bit. The whole time Ryan's been crying out for help because of course they're on a residential street. There's houses up and down. Surely someone can hear all of this going down. He's been screaming and crying out for help so much that one of the attackers actually throttled him, put their hands to his throat and squeezed. I bet that was so scary. They weren't trying to strangle him, just trying to shut him up. But in that moment, you wouldn't, I don't know, I, I would be so scared that they were gonna strangle me to death there in the street. All in all, the attack lasted only a few minutes, but then it all came to a sudden halt. A single gunshot sounds off and Ryan Fisher fell to the ground. One of the men had fired a bullet straight through his chest and it had torn through one of his lungs. He already had a range of different injuries from cuts and scratches to broken ribs from where they'd been kicking him on the ground. But of course this one, a bullet wound through his chest stopped his fight completely. With the shock and the pain, Ryan eventually let go of those two leads. The men grabbed Koji and Gustav, chucked them in the car, and sped away with them. You could actually hear in the footage as the dogs were being picked up and taken to the car, they were growling at these men. They knew that something was seriously wrong. And that's one thing that's really interested me as I've been like looking into this case is just how intuitive animals really are. Of course, they don't have the capacity to be able to help him, but they're doing what they can. They're doing what they know. Just as the getaway car pulled away, you can actually see Miss Asia run out of her hiding place and run to Ryan's side. By now, his body was 
bleeding profusely. It was shutting down and all he could do was panic. He thought that he was gonna die there in the street. He was screaming out, help, help, I've been shot. And very quickly actually, help arrives. People start running out of their houses. Some of them already on the phone to 911 as they're running out to see what's going on. Within 30 seconds of that car disappearing into the night, police were already informed of this incident and they were on their way. And the whole time up until ambulances and that kind of stuff arrived, Miss Asia stayed laying next to Ryan, comforting him in the time when he needed it the absolute most. The poor thing had no idea what had just happened to them, but animals, like I say, are very intuitive. They can sense panic and fear. They can sense like life or death situations. She will have known, all three of those dogs will have known in that moment that this was a very serious incident. They won't have understood it, but holy shit, did they understand the tone of our voice and, and Ryan's screams. Miss Asia had just seen her two brothers get taken away and now her human friend is lying on the floor screaming in distress. She ran around him sniffing like not really knowing what to do, not knowing how to help him and then of course like I said she proceeded to just lay down next to him. Maybe just for some company, maybe to try to calm him down. If she can be calm then maybe that could show him that he could be calm too. And you know what? You can actually hear the tone of Ryan's voice change in the footage once Miss Asia is laying with him. He goes from like the most distressed screams, harrowing screams I've ever heard to a, a bit more calmer calls for help once Miss Asia is there. And her helping to calm Ryan down might have actually increased his chances of survival because panicking does actually kill you quicker if you're bleeding. When you panic, you start breathing faster and when you're breathing faster, your heart pumps faster, pumps blood around your body faster, which means it leaves through your wounds faster than it would have done if you weren't panicking, if your heart wasn't beating so fast. So maybe Miss Asia had a hand in saving Ryan Fisher's life that night. By the time police and ambulances arrived, Ryan was still alive and he could speak as well, which was a really good sign. He was able to talk to the ambulance staff who were treating him. Things were very scary still, don't get me wrong. I mean, his blood pressure was dangerously low. His heart was really struggling to keep beating, to keep pumping the blood around his body, but things were looking better. When they helped him into the ambulance, he got hooked up onto all the machines and whatever, and of course, they make noise. And at one point, Ryan heard his own blood pressure drop to a dangerously low level. And he actually turned to one of the paramedics and said, well, that doesn't sound good. And I, <laughs> I like that. I've got a lot of love for people that can joke their way through hard times because I definitely can't. <laughs> He's stronger than me. If that would have been me, I would have been sobbing in the back of that ambulance. So as Ryan is being loaded into the ambulance, suddenly up above them, they hear the whirring of a helicopter. Somehow, the fucking news had already caught wind of this incident before the victim has even been removed from the crime scene. And there's already helicopters circling the area like vultures. It didn't take long for news of a shooting and dog napping to reach Gaga's team in Italy. And immediately they had a bad feeling that it was Ryan. They called up Ryan's own assistant to see if she knew of anything. And she told them that she'd been calling him and texting him all day, but she couldn't get anything from him. So she raced over to his house and of course, when he didn't come to the door, she really started to panic. She didn't know what else to do but to just head to the crime scene and ask the police that had already cordoned off the area, ask them what was going on, who had been hurt. By the time she got there, Ryan had already been taken away in the ambulance and the police couldn't really tell her much. They didn't know what which hospital Ryan had been transported to. They didn't know anything. They were just working there. And it was in that moment that the assistant had a big brain moment and remembered that Ryan actually had his location on his phone. So she loaded up Find My Friends and sure enough, she saw Ryan's little icon at a local hospital. So she followed it. When she arrived, the doctors told her that Ryan had lost a lot of blood. The bullet had entered above his collarbone and exited through his shoulder and through that it had torn and burned a hole in his lung. Keeping his heart beating was causing Ryan a huge amount of pain at this point in time but the doctors had got him all patched up and they believed that he was going to survive. Whether the robbers had intended to kill Ryan that night, we don't know. Maybe they were trying to get rid of a witness or maybe they were just shooting him so that he would let go of the leads. But regardless, 
the only witness to this crime, the only human witness to this crime was alive and could tell police everything. And one question remains, did those dog nappers have any idea whose dogs they had just stolen. They probably thought in the moment that they were just any old French bulldogs and that the stakes weren't that high, but had they known just how powerful those dogs' mum was and how much she would want to get them back, maybe they wouldn't have messed with them. Ryan could have warned them in that moment that stealing the Lady Gaga's dogs was a terrible mistake. As soon as the news got out, they wouldn't just be criminals, but they would be the most hated people in America. The crime would go viral, they would go viral, the dogs would go viral, and at that point, how are you supposed to sell these famous stolen dogs? Every potential buyer will have heard this story, and as soon as they see them, they'll know that they're Lady Gaga's dogs, so they're gonna get caught as soon as they try to sell them on, which was the whole point of this. They wanted to sell the dogs, but they wouldn't be able to now. And if it got to that point where the dog nappers were now thinking, shit, we can't do anything with these stolen dogs that we've got, the chances are that people that are awful enough to steal a dog from the street, they're probably the same kind of people that would just shoot and kill a dog that they felt wouldn't serve them anymore. And so for that exact reason, even after being shot through the chest in the street, Ryan decided to keep all of that information to himself. He wasn't gonna let the robbers know just how famous and precious these dogs actually were. He could have divulged all of that information in the moment to save his own life, but he didn't because on the off chance that it could have catastrophic effects for those dogs, he didn't, he didn't want to be the cause of that. He knew that the best way to protect those three dogs was to keep their owner's name a secret and act like they were just regular French bulldogs. When Gaga got the news, it was devastating for her on so many levels. Of course, two of her puppies were gone, kidnapped by horrible people that probably didn't care whether her dogs lived or died. She didn't know if they were gonna live or die. What an awful situation. And on top of that, she was also coming to terms with the fact that her dear friend and employee, Ryan Fisher, had almost been murdered whilst trying to protect those dogs. Gaga very quickly posted a statement on Instagram appealing to her followers to help her get Koji and Gustav back. She said, my heart is sick and I am praying my family will be whole again with an act of kindness. I will pay $500,000 for their safe return. I continue to love you, Ryan Fisher. You risked your life to fight for our family. You're forever a hero. Suddenly, those pedigree dogs that beforehand might have gone for about $10,000 each, they were now worth a hell of a lot more. Lady Gaga was willing to pay half a million for two. But those robbers wouldn't keep the French bulldogs for very long. Just two days after Ryan was shot and the dogs were cruelly snatched, Koji and Gustav were found. They had been abandoned, just like tied up to a post on the side of the road, but they were safe and well. They'd only been gone for two days. They were found about 10 miles away from where they'd been stolen. It was just a random woman that I don't know, saw them on the side of the street and decided to take them into the police station. It seemed like the robbers must have been spooked by the massive media coverage on this case to the point where they just decided to abort mission, get rid of the dogs, make the dogs someone else's problem. After 48 very scary hours tied up God knows where, probably starving, Finally, the Frenchie's ordeal was over and they were reunited with Mama Gaga. But the investigation on the other hand was only just beginning. Yes, they might have the dogs back, but police still had to track down their attempted murderer and his whole dog napping gang. We'll get back to the police investigation in a second though. I do just wanna tell you how Ryan Fisher's recovery went because actually at first it was quite quick. He was discharged from hospital within a week. Doctors believed that everything was gonna be fine. Of course he wasn't 100% healed, but they thought that the rest of his recovery journey would be smooth sailing from home but it wasn't at all. In the months after he was discharged from hospital, the lung that he was shot in collapsed five different times. Five times he had to be rushed to hospital and I assume operated on. He was constantly in and out of hospital. They actually ended up having to remove a huge chunk of his lung and just sew him back up. And all of this hospital time meant that he actually spent his 40th birthday 
in hospital and on a frick load of pain meds not knowing what's going on gaga couldn't make it out to visit him in hospital i assume because of like busy filming schedule in italy or whatever but she did make sure that her team sent him a bunch of birthday balloons and cards and gifts and actually they sent that many balloons that the doctors were worried it was going to cause a fire hazard in the hospital it was a long long recovery process for ryan fisher both mentally and physically um he stayed at gaga's house for a few weeks after his surgeries although again I don't think Gaga was there I think she was away filming but at least all of her other staff were there you know cleaners people that could take care of him she had her team fly out one of the best trauma therapists that money could buy so that Ryan could start working through the the trauma the psychological damage that an attack like this would have on you I can't imagine what it's like to try to live your life again after an attempted murder you would just be stuck on fear mode for the rest of your life wouldn't you finally after two months of investigating, the LAPD made five arrests in connection with the dog napping and the attempted murder. There were three men in the car that night. And as I said before, there were two men that got out and attacked him. The third man was just kind of a getaway driver. He was the oldest of the bunch. He was 27 year old Lafayette Whaley. But the other two boys that actually jumped out, the ones that were grappling with Ryan, they were very young. They were 19 year old Jalen White and 18 year old James Jackson. You would think that things like this don't shock me all that much anymore, but I still kind of gasp whenever I hear of an 18 year old being involved in something so vicious. All three of them had just been driving around Hollywood for quite a while that night, specifically looking for French bulldogs to steal because they knew that they could sell them on and make a pretty penny. And then when they saw Ryan, one man walking three dogs, they knew that this was an easy target. They were gonna be able to overpower this one man and they would get three times the dog. So why, less than two days after the incident happened, were Koji and Gustav abandoned, left on the side of the road for some random woman to find? Well, it turns out that woman that found them wasn't so random after all. Her name was Sarah McBride, and according to her original statement, this is what she told the police when she first like brought the dogs in. She said that that night she had, or that day, I don't know when she found the dogs, but basically she had been driving around near her house, think she was on her way home, when she actively saw a car pull up, take the dogs out of the car, tie them to this post, and then drive off. She saw it all happen apparently. And so she texted her friend telling them what she'd just witnessed. And the friend was the one to tell her, I think you have just found Lady Gaga's dog. So with that, Sarah got out of her car, went and grabbed these dogs and took them to the police station. But when the investigation began, police found out that Sarah McBride's story was a load of bullshit. Or should I say dog shit? That's not funny. That's not good. Boo. Every <laughs> everyone boo. But the reason police knew that she was lying was because the whole thing of the dogs being abandoned and then being picked up by her was all recorded on CCTV footage and it did not happen the way that she told them it did. Lucky for police, they were able to see with their own eyes how all of it went down. For a start, Sarah wasn't driving around in her car. She can actually be seen on this footage pacing around on foot up and down the street, holding two phones, one in each hand. Which is already very suspicious business, isn't it? Two phones? What are you, a criminal? Yes. I feel like the only people that have two phones are criminals or influencers. I actually don't know. So it's already incredibly suspicious seeing Sarah on her own on this footage, but then in comes the car that drops off the dogs. There was a really clear view of the license plate of this car, so of course, police run it on the system and they find that it belongs to a man named Harold White. Turns out Harold White is the father of one of the robbers, 19 year old Jalen White. Which sounds pretty normal. A lot of teenagers use their parents' car to get around. But what does all this have to do with Sarah McBride? I hear you ask. Well, I was just getting to that. God impatient. Police were of course doing background checks on all of these people, on, on the boys and on Harold White. And it was something that they found on Harold White's Facebook page that gave them all the proof they needed. He had tagged Sarah McBride in a post that read, Merry Christmas, baby. You're looking happier. Have a good day with your family. Baby. They were a couple. Sarah McBride was one of the robber's father's girlfriends. It was a family affair. Police believed that Harold White and Sarah McBride weren't originally supposed to be part of this plan. I mean, I think it was just supposed to be those three lads going out 
stealing dogs and selling them. But when the news came out that these were famous bulldogs that they'd stolen and that now there was a half a million dollar reward that they could collect, well, of course they wanted to collect the reward for their own crime. But how were they gonna do that without putting a spotlight on themselves. It was way too dangerous to go and try to claim the reward themselves. They needed an accomplice that could pretend to find the dogs and hand them in and then collect the reward for them. And of course, this is where Sarah McBride comes in. They thought that Sarah was their best option. They needed someone that they really, really trusted because now they were an accomplice to this crime. They needed to, someone that they trusted not to blow the lid off the whole thing. But it also needed to be someone that was far enough removed from the boys that it would be hard for police to connect it back to them. And it's quite tricky to find someone that fits those two briefs. Someone that you really, really, really trust, but is not that close to you. Sarah was the best that they could find, really. One of their father's girlfriends. So together, they all came up with a plan. Sarah was going to pose as a random good Samaritan and act like she had just seen these dogs abandoned on the side of the road. She would hand them in, police would believe her, and then Gaga would give her that huge reward for reuniting her family. It seemed like a perfect plan. Well, apart from the fact that now the reward money was going to have to be split between five people rather than just three people, but still, that's $100,000 each. And that's way more than they ever thought they were gonna get when they stole the dogs in the first place. They had no idea they were so famous. They thought they were selling them for $10,000. Now there's $100,000 on the table for each of them. But the thing that gets me is that one of those boys had been willing to shoot someone over what they thought was a regular old French bulldog that they were gonna get like 10,000 for? Probably not even that, let's be realistic. They go for about 10,000 from breeders, but when someone's stolen it and they can't advertise it properly and they don't have all the certification to prove that this is a pedigree French bulldog, they were probably gonna go for much less having been stolen, you know? But like I say, one of them pulled out a gun and pulled the trigger, shot someone in the chest, over these dogs. It was actually the youngest of the bunch that pulled the trigger, 18 year old James Jackson. He almost became a murderer that night. And I say this all the time, even off YouTube, I can be found going on rants about this to my friends and family because I find it so ridiculous when people are willing to commit murder for monetary gain. Because there's an overwhelming chance that you're gonna be caught. So even if you were to briefly get like reward money or you know, sometimes people kill to get their life insurance money, even if that money was to be deposited into your bank, you have very limited time with it until police catch you. Especially in the 2020s, there is such a low, low, low chance that you would ever be able to get away with murder. I just find it so ridiculous and also, funny. Like, I like to laugh at criminals like that. Like, you did all this, you ruined your life for money that you're not even going to be able to use now because you're locked in the slammer. And that's exactly what happened to these five. They didn't even try to make this whole thing discreet. So, of course, police were able to link it back to them so easily and they were all caught for this. Of course, the three dog nappers in the car were thrown in jail. We'll get back to them later, but Harold and Sarah weren't sentenced to any prison time. Of course, they were charged with different things, just in general, being an accessory to this kidnapping. They both ended up receiving two years of probation each, which means they essentially got away unscathed. You know, they had no prison time, no loss of their freedom. All they had to do was regularly check in with a probation officer to make sure that they were behaving. Meanwhile, the three robbers were placed on a million dollar bail each, a million dollars each, and they all waited in police custody for their trial to roll around. Well, two of them did. One of them did not. And what I'm about to tell you genuinely sounds fake, but I promise you it's not, it's all true. James Jackson, you know, the guy that pulled the trigger, the youngest of them all, the one that nearly killed Ryan Fisher, Police released him from jail by accident. That is insane to me. The police, you had one job, guys, to keep the bad guy in the little barred room and they didn't even do that. It was just over a year after James had shot Ryan when the prison guards came to his cell and told him that he was free to go because all of his charges had been dropped. James was caught completely off guard but obviously didn't question it. He just kind of went along with it. He had no idea why on earth his charges would be dropped, 
but he wasn't gonna look a gift horse in the mouth, so he just kind of went with it. He was like, oh, okay, cool, leaving. Leaving prison then. He knew that something had probably messed up. This was definitely a mistake. He was an attempted murderer. How can all of those charges have been dropped? But either way, he kept his mouth shut and he let them release him. So now he's out of prison. It turns out that this error was made in the computer system that tracked prisoners' sentences. One of the other officers had accidentally changed James's sentence. Afterwards, the cops described this as a clerical error, which means it was definitely a human that had gone into that system and input the wrong sentence. And now the system said that James Jackson's charges had been dropped. So the prison guards believed it, of course, and they let him out. They released an attempted murderer back onto the streets. We don't know how long it took like the prison guards and police to realize that a mistake had been made and that an attempted murderer had been released. I'm sure no one wanted to be the officer to admit to that mistake. Uh, so I'm sure it went unnoticed for a little while. But by the time they did realize that James should be in prison, but he's not, everyone started panicking because surely he would have fled by now. I feel like most people in that situation would run far, far away knowing that they had just gotten out of a mad prison charge because of a mistake. You wouldn't want to hang around in the area just in case they realized, just in case they went back on their decision. I mean, if it was me, I mean, first of all, if it was me, I would never commit a crime. But second of all, <laughs> if he was me, I would have ran. Did I just say if he was me rather than if I was him? If he was Ellen O'Neill <laughs> and he was sat in this chair telling this story. James Jackson was out in the world for four months before finally being caught again. They eventually found him hiding in a town in the desert about 60 miles away from the prison. He had fucking traveled. But that was as far as he was going because police cuffed him again and threw him right back in the slammer. So now with all the robbers back where they should be, back under police supervision, their trial was ready to begin. Ryan Fisher very bravely stood up there in court in front of his attempted murderer and his whole gang and he gave a victim impact statement. This was his opportunity to show not only the dog nappers, but the jury, the whole court, just how much these boys' actions had affected his whole entire life and his future from this point forward. It was a really, really emotional statement. Ryan told the court that he had to quit dog walking. He just couldn't do it anymore. First of all, because he was like really fucking injured for a long, long time. He wasn't fit to do walking. But then even when he was physically fit again, he was so anxious. I mean, you would be, wouldn't you? To put yourself into the same situation that you were in when someone almost murdered you. And not only was dog walking his career and had been his career, for a long, long time. He was very well established. Not only was it his livelihood, it was also his biggest passion. He had loved walking all these different dogs and getting to meet different dogs. It was an absolute dream come true for Ryan in so many ways. And these robbers, especially his attempted murderer, had ripped all of that from him. His livelihood, his biggest hobby, his happiness. Gaga and her team had been very, very supportive at the start. And we've already talked about that. But during the later stages of Ryan's recovery, he found himself needing to rely on friends and family for donations. Donations of money to pay for his medical bills and his general upkeep, because of course he, he couldn't work now. Ryan's assistant had thought that Lady Gaga and obviously her team would support Ryan financially for about six months, at least six months after the shooting because medical bills and stuff, you know? Like he did get shot looking after her dogs. So she sent them an invoice for like six months worth of his whatever, like the money that he needed for six months worth of recovery. And Gaga's team came back to her and said, what's, what's this invoice for? It turned out that Gaga's team had only expected to financially support Ryan for three months after the shooting. And that was just while Gaga was in Italy. I don't understand why Ryan's situation changes when Gaga returns from Italy, as if she's gonna take over all the care herself and become his nurse. Like, obviously that wasn't gonna happen. I don't understand why the money stopped when when Gaga returned. What's, what's the correlation? He was still recovering from a fucking bullet wound through the lung after saving these dogs, or trying to save the dogs. When the public found out about this, 
people were pretty angry at Lady Gaga because, well, I mean, she'd offered half a million dollars as a reward to get two dogs back. So surely she could afford, I mean, she's fucking Lady Gaga. She can afford to help this man through his recovery and his medical bills. Especially when you remember the fact that he almost died for her dogs. That's all I'm gonna say on the matter because I'm a bit scared of Lady Gaga's legal team, but my personal opinion is that's shit and that's shit. <laughs> Ryan ended up selling a bunch of his possessions to be able to make some sort of money. He bought a van because obviously he wasn't working at this point in his life um, and he was starting to get a bit like, What's the word? A bit cabin fevery. You know when you're just locked in the house for ages? He wasn't working, he was quite anxious, he wasn't doing much and it wasn't very good for him to just be locked in the house. So he bought this van to go like traveling around America in. He just kind of took some time away from the world at large just to recover, just to find himself again. I think a factor in why he like went off traveling was because Hollywood, like the streets of Hollywood were quite triggering to him. That is where he had almost been shot and well, almost been killed. He had been shot in the streets that he once loved and walked every single day with those dogs. And now he just couldn't stand to go back out there. He also just felt like quite generally uncomfortable at his house because the media had figured out his address. And every so often he would get reporters knocking on his door asking, well, asking for an interview, asking for him to recount the most traumatic experience of his life just so that they could go and write a story. There were just so many reasons why it was much better for Ryan to just get out of Hollywood and just go and have some time away from it all. What Ryan Fisher went through would be enough to break most people, me included. I wouldn't be able to go through all of this and come out the other end as well as Ryan has. He seems, I mean, obviously this was very, very traumatic, but he seems to have dealt with it all pretty well and he can even find it in his heart to forgive the people that did this to him. In the courtroom, he stood up and told his attackers, my hope for you is that you live a life of purpose and grow from what happened that night. I know that from prison it won't be easy, but I do hope you find a calling there as I continue to search for my own. He even thanked the dog nappers for not harming them or killing the dogs once they found out that they were Lady Gaga's. As Ryan was speaking, none of the boys could look him in the eye. James Jackson, who was just 18 when he pulled the trigger, just looked down at his lap the whole entire time. James was barely an adult when he pulled the trigger and has just ruined the rest of his life with that alone. In that split second, he made a decision that is now gonna put him in jail for decades of his life. He is gonna miss out on those golden years, your 20s, your 30s. He, I don't know, that's when most people do their settling down. That's when most people do their learning. He's gonna get out of prison and be quite outcasted. James Jackson was sentenced to 22 years in prison for the attempted murder. Although I can imagine he probably won't serve all 22, he's still gonna be in prison for a while. 27 year old Lafayette Whaley, who was the getaway driver, he actually accepted a plea deal. He got six years for second degree robbery. And the third of the three boys, 19 year old Jalen White, also took a plea deal and he got four years for the same charge, second degree robbery. I think his plea deal was a little bit different. Obviously he got less time than Lafayette. And I think that's because he was the one that told police that James Jackson was the one that pulled the trigger. So he got a little bit of time knocked off because if he hadn't told the police, then they wouldn't know who shot Ryan. At least I think that's the situation, but basically they're all in prison. Justice was served. But even that's not the end of the story. And to me, this is the craziest part of all of it. Sarah McBride, of course, the, the random woman who quote unquote rescued the dogs and brought them back to be returned to Gaga. Well, she'd been thinking and she came to the conclusion that she was still entitled to that reward money, that half a million dollar reward. After all, it was for the safe return of those two dogs. And had Sarah not safely returned the two dogs to Gaga? I mean, I don't know. She thought that on a technicality, she was still owed that half a million. In her eyes, obviously she hadn't had anything to do with the original robbery. 
And she was the one that reunited the dogs. So where's the money? <laughs> where's the money, Gaga? I honestly could not believe this when I heard it because it wasn't just like she was like running her mouth in the papers being like, I still deserve that money. No, she actually tried to sue Lady Gaga for not giving her the reward money. She actually tried to sue her for 1.5 million three times the original amount that she was wanting. The lawsuit was for a breach of contract, um, but when this case actually made it to court, the judge practically laughed in Sarah McBride's face. Cause like, what contract? It was an Instagram post that Lady Gaga had done in the hours after the dog napping saying, someone please return my dogs, I'll give a half a million reward. There was no signing of a contract. It was a ballsy move from Sarah to say the least. And of course, it didn't work. Sarah was never gonna get that money. She was an accessory to this whole crime. And if she did get the money, then she'd be directly profiting from the crime that she had a hand in. So Gaga was free to keep that 1.5 mil and she can spend it however she wants. Hopefully on a truckload of treats for those three Frenchies because all of which are still alive today. Koji, Miss Asia and Gustav are all at home with Gaga. A happy ending. This is a rare occasion for my channel. So let's all just soak up the good vibes for a second. All the dogs survived, Ryan survived. Of course, this was such a tragic ordeal for him to go through, but he was braver than brave. He lost almost everything to the attack, but he never lost his spirit and he never lost his love for dogs. And actually he's back to dog walking now. Woo! Tens across the board, good vibes across the board. Like I said in the beginning of the video, that Instagram page is still active. Of course, he's back to dog walking, so maybe go give him a follow. Hey. What a brave, brave thing to do, to keep hold of those leads, even when he knows one of them has a gun. I feel like that's quite a polarizing situation. I feel like there's some people that would just kind of give them up and there's other people, diehard dog lovers, that would keep hold of those leads. You'll have to let me know in the comments down below, would you take a bullet for your pet? But that is everything we have for this episode of Freaky Friday. Thank you so, so much for watching and thanks again to Scentbird for sponsoring. Remember you can use my coupon code Eleanor Neal to get 55% off of your first month on Scentbird. Again, it's insane. That's over half off. You would be crazy not to take advantage. But yeah, thank you so, so much for watching. If you have any case suggestions for Freaky Friday episodes, please leave them in the comments down below. Me and my team have been scouring the comments lately. And honestly, there's a couple of episodes in the pipeline that we've already gotten from comment suggestions and I'm really excited. I'm excited for you guys to see them. But yeah, thank you so, so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please leave a thumbs up or a comment down below. Engaging with this video in some way really helps to push it out. And I know that's not the most important important thing in the world, but it does make me and the team very excited. <laughs> if you want to watch another one of my videos, there'll be one on screen right now. Or if you want to subscribe to my channel, we post true crime content and freaky weird true crime adjacent content, I would say, in Freaky Friday. Uh, we post every single week, so click on that circle with my face in, subscribe, put notifications on, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!